Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 22nd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide you guys with my weekly update on Arctic sea ice, weather and climate. I held off the update from Friday because there appeared to be some ongoing trends in the Arctic that were entering record range, in particular, record low sea ice and record heat in the Arctic, apparently for this time of year. And I just wanted to wait until there was an indication whether or not these trends would assert. And it does appear that we have some news in that regard for today. I'd also like to apologize. The earlier iteration of this video, apparently we had a, a sound issue. So hope that's, uh, that's all fixed for now and we'll be going ahead with this one. So looking at sea ice in the Uni University of Bremen monitor, I'd just like to point out that the air, there are large areas of open water still remaining, at, even as we enter a period when Arctic sea ice should rapidly be taking hold of the entire Arctic with the Kara and Laptev seas largely ice-free with the Chukchi Sea largely ice-free and with significant sections of the Beaufort Sea also ice-free. The Canadian archipelago seems to be freezing up pretty rapidly as a trough zone moves down into Canada, while Hudson Bay and Baffin Bay still remain largely ice-free as well. So, so what we're seeing is a, a, a very large expanse of open ocean in the Arctic for this time of year. And it does appear that at this time we are entering, entering record low ranges for sea ice with Arctic sea ice now at 6.25 million square kilometers, according to JAXA's sea ice measure. And we also have a number of other sea ice measures showing record low or near record low sea ice for this time of year. It's worth pointing out that at present sea ice is just barely edging out 2016 for the record low range just by about 20,000 square kilometers. But 2016 was a very hot year for the Arctic, uh, well, a very warm year for the Arctic, particularly for this time of year. So to see sea ice at such low levels and, and hit, hitting new record lows again so soon after the record lows seen during fall and winter of 2016 is, is a bit of a milestone and a bit of a, a rapid hit of loss for sea ice for this season and for this time of year. Looking at surface temperature anomalies for the high Arctic in the re range of 80 degree north latitude on toward the pole, we are still seeing much warmer than normal conditions in the region of the central Arctic with temperatures over recent days ranging from about eight to 10 degrees Celsius above average for this large central zone of the Arctic, which is also a very important zone for determining Arctic climate. It appears that cooling for this zone is lagging now by about a month. So we're seeing temperatures that you would typically see in mid-September occurring in mid-October, which is kind of a big deal. Looking at Arctic temperature anomalies, the overall anomaly for the Arctic above the 60 deg 66 degree north latitude line at present, according to the GFS model, is in the range of three degrees Celsius above average, which is very warm for this time of year. We've been seeing temperatures in the range of about 2.5 to 4.5 degrees Celsius above average over recent weeks. And this warming in the Arctic appears to be affecting middle latitude weather in particular helping to reinforce a very warm ridge pattern over the western U.S. and western Canada and parts of Alaska and, and pretty much all of Alaska, as well as reinforcing a, a counter-facing trough pattern, which is bringing cooler than normal temperatures to the eastern U.S. to parts of central and eastern Canada. And it appears that this pattern of very warm western temperatures and cooler than normal stormier than normal eastern and central temperatures uh, and, and weather patterns appears to persist in the ongoing forecast uh, 
as we move forward with, with a lot of heat transfer running in through the Pacific section of the Arctic. I'm going to go ahead and advance this model because I want to show you how these temperatures in this model really peak out, pushing into the five degrees Celsius above average range by October 29th in the forecast. Now, five degrees Celsius above average for the Arctic at this time of year is extraordinarily warm. And if we see this, it would really start to enhance the, the record trend that we have already been seeing. So we this is a forecast we need to keep an eye on. And, and it's even more of a bit of a concern because we have seen this consistent heat in the Arctic over the past few weeks. Looking at sea surface temperature anomalies, not so not only are we seeing a very warm atmospheric state in the Arctic, much warmer than normal, but we are also seeing a very warm ocean state as Arctic sea ice refreeze has tended to lag due in large part to much warmer than normal ocean surface temperatures, which are both resisting refreeze and also ventilating a lot of heat into the Arctic. And we see much warmer than normal temperatures running in through the Barents Sea and in through the Kara and Laptev Seas. But the big anomaly values are really showing up on the Pacific side with the Bering and Chukchi Sea showing sea surface temperatures in the range of four degrees Celsius or higher above normal. And that's that's really warm sea surface temperatures. And, and this is also an indicator of the, the heat transfer that we are seeing coming in from the Pacific into the Arctic Ocean as well. Talked about how we're ed starting to edge into record hot, or I'm sorry, record warm ranges for this time of year. And this is showing up in the freezing degree day values. We're, we're seeing a very high departure from normal, meaning that freezing degree days or or degree days below freezing are really lagging for this time of year. Entering the negative 250 anomaly range, so there's so the Arctic itself is is much closer to thaw than it would typically be for this time of year. And the mean temperature anomaly according to this DMI measure is about 5.16 degrees Celsius above average, which is really extraordinary. And, and entering a, a record warm range for this fall. If this continues, it, it's, it really is something to keep an eye on because it's yet another indicator of polar amplification, which is where the poles warm up faster than the middle latitudes and the equatorial zones as greenhouse gases increase in the Earth's atmosphere. And, and we're really seeing a lot of indicators of polar amplification at this time. I'm just going to check the time. Looks like we have two minutes left. So I'd like to just flip over to the satellite shot. Now, this is an infrared satellite shot showing the, the ice through darkness and cloud cover. And it's not as clear a shot as the visible shot, satellite shot, but we can see the ice edge here running in through the central Arctic. This zone, this, this, isle, this, uh, image in the in the map here is is Svalbard and you can see the ice edge well to the north of Svalbard well to the north of both the Kara and the Laptev seas and and just running in you can see the the ice bridge starting to form over toward the Siberian coast in this part of the East Siberian Sea but much of the East Siberian Sea remains ice free as well as the Chukchi Sea and sections of the Beaufort Sea so so we can just note the the vis visible evidence of a of a warmer than normal arctic and an ice free arctic which is impacting the climate in the middle latitudes at this time in the form of a a very wavy jet stream pattern particularly over north america but also over parts of europe and asia with very strong ridge zones running in through central siberia as you can see in this gfs model very strong ridge zone running up through Western North America and strong trough zones running in through Eastern North America and, and parts of Europe as well. So this wavy jet stream pattern that has been indicated by scientists, again, showing up and something that we need to monitor as we get into winter and fall as it, is, uh, as it relates to polar warming and polar amplification relative to typical fall patterns. 
So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.